Hey y'all, it's Anime K-Man. Today I'm gonna be reviewing the 10th episode of Kimo de Kusa. And damn it, this episode was like good, but at the same time though, it like it makes it sets you up to for like some grand epicness, and then it just ends, and then you're like, damn it, I wanted to see more. But you know what? I mean, I mean that in like the most positive way. Now, let me just start out by saying, damn it, this episode had such a great amount of character development because I like how finally you have at least the crew, they finally trust the little robot Shiro more because it, near the end of the second half when you have the Rinas and Ritsu and Shiro stay behind so that they give, because they make these leaves to help out Wakaba and Reen. I kind of like this sequence when they're asking if Shiro to help take care of the girls so that they can send Shiro after Wakaba and for help in case something happens to them or they get attacked by something. So I kind of like that in this episode. It shows that they're becoming more trusting of Shiro. So I like, kind of like the development. And then what I also love about this episode is you finally have Ritsu finally say it out loud to Rin that what Rin's probably feeling isn't poison, but more along the lines of medicine. And I was like, all right, all right. She's getting closer, not necessarily there, because we all know those are feelings of love. Let's just be real. But hey, I like that. Because that little sequence when Ritsu and Rin are talking to each other was sweet. Especially when you have Ritsu give these compliments to Rin. I thought that was a beautiful sequence right there. How you have Ritsu say stuff like, if she were born as the little sister, Ritsu would have probably died because that's why she works so hard. Because she's the older sister. So, herself. So I kind of like that kind of stuff. To see more of the inside of her character in these kind of situations. Because we always see Ritsu, for the most part, she tries to be happy. But she has like a inside of her that feels some kind of sadness. And I kind of like to see those moments. It makes her feel like a much more balanced character to see these kind of vacations. To see her weaknesses as a character. And I like that. And then when you're in here that... I was like, man, that was so sweet how I can hell tell like she really appreciated hearing that from her sister. So I thought that sequence was pretty darn great from a character standpoint. And I also like that little development going on with the arena. So they even wanted to give a cup of water to like walk about like they actually physically show and they want him to drink so that he can be healthy in the next situation. And I kind of like that too. You even see them caring more about Wakaba um, explicitly. And I also like how in the later half when Rin, and Rin is go going towards um, the tree, you have the Rinos also push Wakaba along and I kind of like that, kind of like the older sisters going on like the literal brother type of dynamic too. I felt that it made the episode good in that standpoint. So all these sequences were sweet too and it makes me and it makes me just love the bond between these characters even more. I think it's really beautiful. So that's why I thought this episode was good from a character dynamic standpoint. Because all of that character development, it's substantial. Because just compared to how it started out when the arenas were interacting with Waka. But to now it just brings a smile to my face. And I also like how in canon you have Rain acknowledge that Waka was becoming more assertive too. Because... While we, the audience, have been seeing that, we haven't heard anyone in the anime, in the canonverse, actually say that. So that was also another positive in this episode, too. And I also like how this episode gives some character development to Rin, because she's actually more trusting of Wakaba when she even allows when Wakaba's asking to touch her leaf at this point. That was also another cool sequence right there, because a few episodes ago, when... Even when Rin was trying to gain trust in Waka, but she didn't necessarily allow that. But in this episode, now that they've gone through more experiences together, she's actually allowing it to, to occur at this point. And I love that kind of stuff. 
It shows the growth in the relationship. And hell, it makes me happy because I'm on the Rin and Wakaba ship. But that was pretty cool. And it's a nice, and it was a nice way to set up the cliffhanger at the end when well, Wakaba does touch the leaf and then suddenly a flashback triggered it that um, Rin's witnessing, which is possibly the first person who wants to like grow up into an adult quickly. And I was like, what? That is some crazy twist right there. And it fucking excites me to see more. So that's why I thought this episode was great from the character standpoint. The character development for Rin, some of it for Uitsu, a good amount for the Rinas. And I just love it all around. And that's why I thought this episode also did well from a story standpoint because you have all the, you have the sisters and you had Waka, but pretty much, well, the sisters didn't technically drink water, they just pretended they didn't, but you had them all just have this nice comfy moment right before the intensity is about to start. And I like how the way the episode built it up. It was pretty cool. And it just made it, it's even more epic when we get um, Rin starting to have a flashback because everything surprises him looks normal and it brings up a few theories. Could that first person be the mother of the Rinas, Rin and Ritsu? That's the fucking question I have, so this should be immensely interesting. At least that's going to make some interesting questions that I'll hopefully answer next week. So I kind of like that too about the episode from a story standpoint. Because it looks like now we're finally going to get some answers. And the content in this episode was interesting. And then aside from that, the animation, while it wasn't the best, because I felt like the animators, they were showing bits of a fight scene to just end it quickly. And I'm like, what's the point of sh even teasing us a fight if you're not going to show it? Just don't show us the fight and just have them walk to Island 10. So... I'd say that was like the only downside of the animation. You can now tell they were cutting some cost here and there. But, at the very least, everything else in this episode looked good. Scenery looked great. It looked good from an art standpoint. And I'll give this episode some credit. I did love the sky scenery. It did look beautiful in some instances. I gotta give it credit for that. And the voice acting was good, and I did like the soundtrack used in this episode. And that's why I'm gonna give it, rate this episode a 9.25 out of 10. All around, just for the nice character interactions and the character development. It more than carried the episode. And then that cliffhanger at the end. Because originally I was going to rate this episode at a 9 or maybe an 8 out of 10. But that fucking cliffhanger, it was like, yo. Definitely knew how to end at the right note for me. So anyways, guys and gals. These are my thoughts on Kusa episode 10. Comment down your thoughts in the comment section below. Rate the video, subscribe, and I'll, de and I'll definitely see you guys for next week because I'm pumped up. Oh, my goodness. All right, everyone. Bye-bye.